What is up, everybody? And thank you once again for tuning back in. Today, we're going to talk about the bombshell that Microsoft dropped when it comes to their next exclusive game, Hellblade. And this has been a little bit of a bombshell since they first announced that they bought Ninja Theory back in 2018 at June's E3. And the, this whole situation with Ninja Theory kind of is a little bit of an upset for the PlayStation community right off the get-go. Because originally Hellblade was launched as an exclusive game, or at least announced back in August of 2014 as a PlayStation 4 exclusive. And if memory serves me right, that game stayed exclusive until Microsoft purchased Ninja Theory. And then all of a sudden it started popping up on the Xbox consoles. And to really hammer that whole situation home, the next gen upgrade was on the Xbox ecosystem. And as far as I know, that next gen upgrade never made it over to the PlayStation platform. But in all honesty, Ninja Theory is a really great get for Microsoft. They are a very well put together studio, and they're honestly going to be setting the bar when it comes to future game development, both for artistic design, ingenuity, but also use of the Unreal Engine. We've already seen how the Unreal Engine 5 demos on like the Matrix demo and all the other stuff like from the state of Unreal on YouTube. And the Unreal Engine is an absolutely awesome piece of technology. It's even being embraced by the film and movie industry to basically start crafting some really great cinematic experiences on the big screen and on your television at home. But going back to Ninja Theory, Hellblade, the original game, was created about 20 people and Ninja Theory's philosophy that they are crafting inside the studio, and it's a, a philosophy that they call Dreadnought, this theory is to take small groups of teams and have them focus on a smaller on a smaller effort to deliver impactful games using breakthrough technology. And they are showing this initiative through the Dreadnought umbrella of creating great games on their di developer diaries on ninja theory's youtube channel and they're actually really great to watch you should really check them out there, there's some gr amazing insight on both how they're implementing technology and also the science of mental health to craft their games and we're already seeing some of this technology being implemented in some of their future endeavors like Project Mara with how they're implementing LiDAR technology and other surface mapping technologies to create a very lifelike experience that is going to reflect mental health in a very big way and we've already seen some of this mental health direction in the first Hellblade and they're going to go down that road even th further with Hellblade 2 and we're really going to see their their crowning glory for embracing mental health and the connection of your mind and body through Project Mara but going back to how Ninja Theory is really changing the way things are being done in the gaming industry is they even said that if you take all the developers that are currently working on all the individual games that they have going on in the studio there is still less people working on these games combined than you would find at a major publisher working on most AAA titles. They really feel keeping teams small and being able to focus on the game in front of them is really crafting some very groundbreaking experiences. And I believe that's pretty much dead on. I mean, they are going to be setting a big standard for gaming in the future and it's going to be almost a standard of quality that other brands like PlayStation are probably going to have to start embracing as well when it comes to just how lifelike the, the character designs are getting over at Ninja Theory, especially when it comes to Hellblade 2. We haven't seen any character designs for Project Mara, but at least the environmental design is absolutely mind-blowing. But when it comes to the character design of what Hellblade 2 is presenting, 
this is really what's going to set the bar and also show the amount of quality that comes out of this studio to make them a flagship studio for the Xbox brand of studios. And that is the technology that they've kind of helped apart in shaping over time with Unreal Engine. And that is the meta human 4D capture technology that was actually shown on stage at the state of Unreal uh, developer demo uh, showing just a few days ago. You can go check out the YouTube video link down in the description. And they went on stage with an actress and they showed how this technology can now be used on anything as glorious as a piece of performance, professional equipment, all the way down to an iPhone. And it was able to render in real time to a single computer on stage. The, the actress that was on stage with them, she actually talked about the Hellblade development and how when they would do some of the recordings for Hellblade, the motion capture and everything, it would take weeks, sometimes months to actually process the, the data before they would even be able to view the results of the motion capture in, in action. And if anybody understands processing information and data, anybody who uploads to YouTube or deals with Adobe, they know all about processing because literally I just had a video the other night that took a few hours just to process over to the YouTube servers for you guys to watch. Just like this video is going to take a couple hours just for it to process as well. But now these processes are able to take place in real time using the Unreal Engine and they can actually see a captured performer's animations compared to the animation on screen. They can literally compare the two of them at the same time to make sure that these animations are actually looking very fluid like. And it just goes beyond that as when the person is scanned in for starters, they only need about three frames of the person's face for the, the technology to map out their face and to create a rendering in a in a video game or CG world of that individual. And from that moment on, there is actually a grid that has been laid over that character, which allows the developer to manipulate the, the character's facial animations and make them react in any way without even having to be act out, acted out. All they need is just a small clip of the actor saying a few lines. And from that point, the technology can make this person essentially hold any facial expression or say anything they need them to as long as they've got the lines for it. And they can even map this over other people that have been scanned into the, the metahuman technology or even other created characters they've shown this in the demo where they had the actress act out some lines and then they took her performance and created it live on stage in real time in just a few short minutes and they then took her performance and put it on other character models that were part of the system even on male characters it, it the technology is absolutely amazing in my opinion and I guess they Unreal Engine worked very closely with Ninja Theory to perfect this technology. And now this technology is going to be implemented in a wide variety of games as long as the character models fit what they call the meta human standard of development. So that way they can implement this technology on them. It's going to be really great for lifelike character builds in the future. And we're already starting to see these lifelike character builds emerge in other games like the new Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen have also implemented some stuff into their game as well from the Unreal Engine. And they even have a little bit of a custom tool set that they're using. Uh, this custom tool set allows them to craft two worlds simultaneously, kind of like the Medium did in their game. But this is going to allow artists to craft these worlds simultaneously and be able to compare them to each other simultaneously in real time and also be able to make them to where there's a, there's a good fluid feel between the, both the real world in Lords of the Fallen and I guess the undead world that they are crafting in the game. But they're also, like I said, going to use that character build that has been perfected in MetaHuman. And in Lords of the Fallen, they really want the player to be able to craft 
as lifelike of a custom character as they can. And this custom character is also going to be complemented with outfit outfits that are going to have amazing texture detail or what they refer to as micro details to these outfits that are going to make them very lifelike. And they're also harnessing uh, another part of the Unreal Engine referred to as the Unreal Engine Chaos Physics Engine, which simulates lifelike, lifelike movements of clothing, chains, hair, belts, and other features of the character to really ground a, the player experience in, as realistic as possible. And they're even implementing another part of the Unreal Engine referred to as the Lumen GI. It's a new form of real-time lighting and shadowing that bounces off objects in the environment and also uses the different parts of the landscape of the environment to create shading. And this can all be done in real time. This doesn't make it to where the this makes it to where the developer doesn't have to craft these environments, render and process them, and find out if there's any mistakes. They can go in and fine tune these environments in extremely lifelike detail in real time, which is going to speed up the development process for all of us and they're even talking about how this lumen gi is also going to help with optimizing the game for the end user to to make a more fluid running optimized game so in closing when it comes to the future of gaming the Unreal Engine is going to change a lot for the gaming industry. It's going to help streamline gaming development where developers will be able to concentrate on more important things in the game and be able to craft amazing experiences. This is going to open the door for more developers, smaller developers even, to create even bigger, grandiose experiences for us to all enjoy. And it's all kind of really starting and stemming from the support and the innovation that was provided by studios over from Xbox, studios like Ninja Theory, and even The Coalition. The Coalition helped do uh, the, the, the Matrix demo that came out, I believe, like last year for the Unreal Engine 5, which was absolutely amazing. Go on your Xbox, check it out right now. You'd be mind blown if you haven't already. But this just really shows how Xbox and the studios under their umbrella play an important part in the gaming industry and help pushing that innovation forward. And I am really looking forward to what is going to happen next for gaming, especially with the implementation of the Unreal Engine 5. For more content like this and more information about the Unreal Engine 5 as it comes out, please stay tuned to this channel, subscribe, like, and I really enjoy all the community support that I've seen recently on my channel. I really can't thank you enough, and I look forward to continuing this journey with you all. So till next time we meet again, my friends, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I am Centurion1307. And stay safe out there and remember to always play what you love on what you love, no matter what anybody says.